Okay, good morning, everyone. It looks like it's nine o'clock. Uh, we will go ahead and get started this morning. Just gonna let a couple more people in here. Give me one second. All right. Well, this morning, um, we are going to cover Medicare pickup um, and just kind of like give an overview of how uh, Medicare pickup works, um, you know, what it looks like on various reports, how to correct um, an issue, you know, if Medicare pickup isn't started um, when it should be. Um, so I've included a PowerPoint on the trainings and registration page. So it's underneath the um, December 8th, which is today, Medicare pickup session. Um, so if you click on this link here, it should take you to the Medicare um, pickup oops, uh, presentation that we're gonna um, go through this morning. So I try to put things um, you know, in picture format because it is, I think we all can agree, Medicare pickups just kind of one of those um, very confusing, trying um, issues. So hopefully, if issues come along later, you can reference back to this and um, you know take a look at those screenshots that are provided in the PowerPoint to try to give you a look and feel of how um, you know things that we talked about today um, look, and that might give you another resource then to to reference back to and hopefully be helpful. So again, um, that PowerPoint that's linked in the training and registration page that we're gonna cover, I have that open here. And first I just wanna cover um, you know, how Medicare pickup is calculated. So you know, by law, Medicare pickup is actually taxable um, when it comes to Medicare itself. So you know, you're paying Medicare on top of the Medicare pickup. So that's where the little tricky, you know, piece to the puzzle comes in. So we're gonna walk through how the system actually calculates Medicare pickup. So um, when it comes to the applicable gross calculation, the system is gonna take and add up all of the section 125 annuities plus any HSA amounts. This is something that often gets forgot about. So make sure when you're you know, helping a, a district in that calculation, don't forget about the HSA amounts. Those are also um, you know, included in that total annuity amount that the system's capturing. So once it then um, you know, figures out this total annuity amount, the applicable gross then is calculated by taking the gross minus that total annuity amount that we just um, you know, figured out in the um, step above. And then we're dividing that by 98.55% because we're paying 1.45% on top of the normal 1.45%, okay? So that's gonna be for both the board you know, the employee side that's being paid by the board and the board amount. Um, so keep, you know, that in mind. So when you're actually calculating then the withholding side of things, the system is taking that applicable gross that we just calculated in the first slide and it's taking it times 1.45%. So we've already sort of inflated the applicable gross for that extra 1.45%. Now for the withholding, we're just taking 1.45% for the employee amount that's being paid by the board and then the employer side. Okay, so that's how the withholding is calculated. So let's step through an example then. Um, this employee was paid a total gross of $6,666.67. So you can see here, hopefully, um, I can make this just a little bigger if that's helpful. Can everyone see these okay? I know it's, whoops, a little bit small. 
Well, I just probably cut off my screenshot. Um, so hopefully you can see that um, well enough to, to read some figures. Um, but again, you can see in this, um, the payroll items that were withheld from this payment, they did have an HSA and that amount was $40. And they also had an annuity that's treated as a section 125. And those are highlighted here for $90. So that total equals $130. So that's the total annuities that we're going to subtract out of then that total gross amount. So you can see here then that becomes a gross um, for Medicare purposes of $6,536.67. We're gonna divide that then by that 98.55% to arrive at the Medicare applicable gross of $6,632.85. So you can see here, hopefully, not probably the best, I apologize. Um, when you look at the payment side of things, when this payment was processed, the gross from this payment is the $6,666.67. And the applicable gross for Medicare purposes is the $6,632.85 that we calculated above. The withholding amount then, we're gonna take that applicable gross that we just calculated here times the 1.45% and then times two, because we have the employee side that's being paid by the board and then the employer side. So that total is $192.36. So that matches then the payment um, that we, you know, if you looked at this employee's payment um, and viewed the details of the um, payroll items withheld, it matches what we're seeing um, in the highlighted um, payment details. Okay, if there are any questions at any time, please don't hesitate to interrupt me. Again, I know this can be a beast, um, so hopefully I'm not confusing you more as we move along. Um, again, I hope the screenshots and the calculations and the examples are helpful to, to reference back to, but feel free to ask questions at any time. <clears throat> so what happens then is, um, the, uh, when the employee's W-2, um, is generated, um, the full pickup amount then is added to the total gross, the applicable gross on the federal, the state, and the OSDI payroll items. Now the city is just slightly different. Um, if you'll remember, there's an act, there's a section and I've you know outlined that in the screenshot below um, that says employer paid amounts to be taxed um, on those city payroll items. So if that city then is on the right side, meaning those um, employer paid amounts should be taxed, then it will add it to the city um, record as well, or the city line, I should say. So this configuration um, option is what controls whether that amount gets added to that appropriate city on the employee's W-2. In this case, you can see here from this screenshot, nothing is you know, moved or selected on the right side. So nothing is gonna be applied in the screenshots that we um, look at going forward when it comes to the city um, taxes. All right. Okay, so I think sometimes um, it gets confusing as far as how the amounts look or should look on the various reports. So using our example um, that we just stepped through, keep in mind that you know this employee had a total gross of the six thousand sixty six dollars and sixty seven cents, but for Medicare purposes that gross was $6,632.85. So when we jump back to our reports here, 
when you run an employee's earnings register, it's just straight up the amount that that employee, you know, was paid. So that would be the 6,000. I know it's kind of hard to see here. So I've included that um, figure here. It's going to be that $6,666.67. When you run um, a quarter report, you can see then um, that <clears throat> those amounts then get added um, or are, are actually the same. But when it comes to the W-2 report, the, the amount of the Medicare pickup, as we just talked about, gets added to the federal taxable gross and total gross, the Ohio, so the state taxable and total gross, the city, in this case, nothing happened to the city. It stayed the same. You can see it's $6,666.67. That's a lot of sixes to say. Um, because that flag on the payroll item configuration screen, you know, was um, was set um, to not tax. So nothing changed here. Now, when it comes to the Medicare, you can see here it's it's reflecting the total gross. So that same gross that the employee, you know, that we see on the earnings register. However, the taxable gross, applicable gross, um, does change. And that again is reflected by taking that total gross minus section 125 minus the HSA divided by the 98.55%. So that figure that we just calculated earlier in the example. One thing I wanna point out is this section 125 total here, you can see it's, it's reflective of $130, but we also have the HSA amount of $40. So this on the W-2 report, this section 125 amount is a total of, and I've put a note off to the side here, the section 125 along with the HSA amount. So we're not going to add $130 plus $40. We just, to balance things, we're just using the $130 figure, which is already inclusive of that $40 HSA amount. Um, we break this out just so you know, you have a means to balance that figure if, if you choose to do so. Okay. Have I confused everybody? <laughs> or we're, we're good. All right. So hopefully, you know, giving a, an example of each, the way that each of these look on the various reports is helpful. Um, because I know that you know, a lot of times you're like, well, I run the, you know, earnings register and it looks one way and I run the quarter report and it looks one way and I run the W-2 report. Should that W-2 report include those Medicare um, pickup amounts? Absolutely. So these examples here show you exactly what the W-2 report is doing. So if the difference in what the, you know, original gross is and what the W-2 gross is showing is your Medicare pickup amount, then you're in balance. The, that this employee's W two is in balance. Okay. All right. So I think um, you know one of the most common um, questions that we get when it comes to Medicare pickup is, oh no, you know we have a situation where um, a district was supposed to set up Medicare pickup from you know this time forward, and that didn't happen. So we're going to step through um, some an example whoops, of how things look and then how to fix those. So the first thing um, that, you know, we have a situation where an employee should have had Medicare pickup from the starting the last pay and that didn't happen. So I've outlined steps here um, to take in correcting that scenario. So first thing is to go to the payroll item, um, the Medicare payroll item, and we're going to actually remove that rate of 1.45%. So the employee is no longer paying, you know, any part of their Medicare. 
we're going to update the employer rate to be 2.9%. Now, once we have this, you know, set up accordingly, the system sort of does most of the work for us. Um, however, in this case, we have to correct the last pay where things weren't set up quite right. So in on again on the Medicare payroll item, we're going to in the air adjustments screen, we're going to click create and we're going to create an adjustment for the original amount of the employee's Medicare that was withheld to give that back to them. So to give it back to them, we're going to enter that as a negative. OK, we're going to give them back that original amount. And I can't stress this enough because we're going to talk about, you know, a different amount going forward. So if this employee, you know, originally had X number of dollars withheld for Medicare and it should have been paid by the board, that's the amount we're giving back to the employee. We're going to leave the date blank and you can, you know, enter a description for auditing purposes and we're going to click save. When it comes to the employer side, so there's an employer error adjustments section, as I'm sure you're all familiar with on the payroll item. Again, we're going to click create and we're going to enter the original amount of that board paid Medicare. We're going to enter this as a negative as well because we're going to give that amount back. Now, I know maybe this isn't the way that everybody has um, approached correcting this. But um, from our standpoint, kind of backing out the actual amounts of what happened um, is the cleanest way to um, approach this. So, you know, sometimes I know, I think that just the difference and what should have been and what was um, gets entered and that's okay. It's just for, you know, a clean sort of audit trail, um, you know, it's probably best to back out the original of everything and we're going to start over basically. Mm -hmm. So we're going to enter that original amount of that board paid amount that was withheld. Mm -hmm. Again, as a negative, we're going to leave the date blank. We can enter a description for auditing purposes. We're going to leave that pickup checkbox unmarked and we're gonna click save, okay? And I think it'll make more sense here when we um, show a live example. Um, so now we need to create the adjustments, the air adjustments for what should have happened, okay? So again, all of these are gonna happen in the employer air adjustments section. So in the amount, we're gonna enter the amount of Medicare that should have been paid by the board as a positive. So this is not the same amount that was refunded to the employee because as we you know, noticed or calculated in our example up here, this amount is calculated differently. You know, We have this extra 1.45% on top of what was, you know, the, just the straight 1.45%. So those amounts are not gonna be the same. So you can't just enter, you know, the same amount that you just um, subtracted as a, as a negative to refund um, the board amount back. So we're gonna give, you know, or I'm sorry, enter this amount. And this is the amount then that's the employee share that should have been paid by the board. Um, again, when you create the, um, the air adjustment, here's the pickup box then that needs to be checked. By doing this, the system does almost everything for you. So we're gonna um, make sure that this pickup box is correct. And we're also gonna make sure we enter the right amount um, for Medicare pickup using that calculation that we talked about earlier. Okay, so we have a question. So both the employee adjustment and employer adjustments 
need to be as um, posted as the negative. That is correct. So um, sorry if I didn't make that clear. So we have those um, you know, in the, the steps. So we're basically undoing what was originally done. So we're gonna you know, enter the employee and the employer as a negative. So in the end, as you're gonna see going forward in our, uh, in our example, you're basically um, going to be, the board will be paying the difference of what they paid originally and what they should have been, should have, should have paid. But again, you know, in our mind, that is a clean like audit trail. So let's undo everything that was done originally and then post those the way they should have been. Okay. Hopefully that answers. Um, so, but that last entry is error adjustment is positive. Correct. That one should have been. Okay. Do I have, did I say something incorrectly? I'm sorry. No, Laura, you've done three adjustments, right? One to fix the employee, one to fix the employer. And then the third one is to make it right. And that third one's the one that's positive, correct? Oh my goodness. Yes. I am so sorry. You are absolutely right. My bad. Let's fix that right now. And I'll repost the. No, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry. This one's, I'm... this one's negative. The one where the box is unchecked is negative. It's that last one you reviewed that should be positive. Oh. Yeah. The one where it's checked. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think I don't know if that's what Brandy was asking about, but there's okay. three adjustments. The first two are negative, the last one's positive. Okay. All right. And, yes. Yeah, and that's you're, correct. So we're undoing. Fine. I'm sorry. Let's 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 go backwards. So to undo what was done, we're going to enter those as negatives. So this is the employee side that we're giving that amount that should have been paid by the board. We're going to give it back to them as a negative. And here's the employer side. And it looks like I changed that by mistake. Yep, that needs that, to be negative. You were okay. negative. Your, your slide was good. Okay, I'm I'm sorry. I'm confusing everybody. Okay, now we're moving on to the correction side. So the correction, we're actually going to do three corrections. So this is to correct the amount that should have been, the employee amount that should have been paid by the board to begin with. Here's where we're going to check, make sure that pickup box is checked so that the system does all the extra work behind the scenes for us. OK, and again, keep in mind, this is not going to be the same amount as we refunded, you know, two slides prior as a negative. OK, we're going to use that calculation that we talked about in the beginning to calculate the right correct amount. So now um, we have to worry about the employer side. So the employer side, then the board side, again, we're gonna enter um, an error adjustment in this um, section. And again, um, making sure that we leave the box unchecked this time. So this is the amount, the board amount, um, with the pickup applied to it. So again, it's not the same amount that was originally given back as a negative, and we're going to post this as a positive. Okay, so let's go through an example. And I think now that I've probably royally confused everybody, um, I think it'll make more sense. So here's here's an example of a payment that should have been Medicare have met, had Medicare pickup applied to it. So you can see here, the employee actually paid $94.78. The board then paid their normal $94.78. So when you calculate the Medicare gross, the applicable gross, I'm sorry, again, going back to the original example that we have had, we're gonna you know, take the original gross, so you can see that here. And I love these grids on the payment detail. Um, uh, so you can you know, make sure you're using those. There's columns way to the right that are super helpful. You know, drag and drop those so you can see all of the different you know, pieces and parts. And you know, one of them is the gross. You know, um, 
there's obviously the air adjustments and stuff that you can, you know, move um, to the left so that they're on your screen and you can see exactly what happened, um, you know, in all the, the different payroll items um, right in front of you. Super helpful. So again, um, the same Section 125s apply. So we have our health savings account amount of $40, and we have this annuity, the 541 of $90, um, that's a, a Section 125 as well. So the total of those two is $130, just like our, our example um, in the beginning. So that Medicare applicable gross is the 653667. We're going to take that times 1.45%. And again, this is going to apply then. <clears throat> Wait, what? Oh, I'm sorry. In this example, it's just how it was calculating um, the Medicare without the pickup. So this is how the system calculated the original amount of Medicare. I'm getting ahead of myself. This is how the quarter report looks. So you can see you know exactly how that looks. Um, I know the screen might be a little hard to, to see, um, but hopefully if you need a reference back to that, it'll, it'll be helpful. And then here's how the W-2 report looks. So again, each of those before, and we're gonna take a look at it after. So now what happens is, um, you know, we have to post those air adjustments to correct what should have been done from that prior pay. So um, again, we're gonna post a negative 9478 for the employer air adjust, I'm sorry, employee air adjustment to give that money back to the employee. That's what should have been um, paid by the board. Then we're gonna also enter under the employer air adjustment, a negative 9478 without the pickup checkbox marked. And this would be the amount that was originally paid by the board that should have been pickup, you know, the employer side. Now we're gonna do the adjustments for the employer, um, the board to actually, you know, pay the Medicare like they should have. So we're going to post an employer air adjustment for a positive 96.18 because that's the true amount of Medicare pickup for that calculation, you know, that we, we did prior with the checkbox marked. So that, you know, tells the system that this is the employee amount that's being paid by the board, you know, do the magic behind the scenes to make everything um you know, look correctly on the employee's W-2. And then here's the employer amount, the regular board paid amount that has the pickup, you know, calculation attached to it. And we're going to not check that pickup box. Okay. So here's how the pay report's going to look. And again, in the end, you know, the employee or the board is paying the 9618 and then the difference if we would subtract 9618 um and take if we would take that minus 9478 that difference then is added you know to that employer amount that should have been paid on the the last pay along with the normal employee amount that should have been paid by the board so that's a total of $97.58. So again, as I was saying earlier, you know, I know sometimes the difference gets posted and that's okay. Um, but we do, you know, again, just for, you know, a clean audit trail, you can see, oh, this is the amount that, you know, should have been um, withheld and wasn't um, and, and make, you know, that clean, um, that clean audit. So in the end, it is the difference that shows up on the pay report and that's what the board's paying, but it might be a little easier to follow if you post your adjustments that way. Okay. All right. 
So here then is what the quarter report looks like after we've processed though that refund to give it back to the employee and then um, process things the way that they should have. Now you can see here that there are two lines on the quarter report. Um, we've had questions about this. How do I fix that? Um, unfortunately, at this time, there is not a way um, to fix that. If you would post adjustments to move to zero out this employee line here and try to you know clean that up, it affects the employee's W-2. So at this time, the districts are just going to want to take note of that. Um, and, you know, make note of that's, you know, unfortunately how this system is, is taking a look at things. Um, and we can't zero out, you know, by posting an, an air adjustment for the 9478, it does affect um, this, this line below that's actually correct and the employee's W-2. So these aren't actual duplicates just informational. Um, yes, so you do need to make note of that. Um, does it affect the totals? Yes, so when you're balancing, um, we've you know had that pointed out before, they're off by these exact amounts. So you do need to make note of that as well as you know take that into consideration with your when you're when you're balancing. I know I talked to the developer about this this morning because I know I, I know we brought this up um, at a prior sprint meeting. And I wasn't sure where we were at with that. Um, and he's going to take a, another look at this to see what we can do um, going forward. I think it just kind of got lost in the shuffle, so to speak. And um, so we'll look at improving this to make it make it correct. But we've had a lot of you know questions about the quarter report um, and the balancing side of things. So I know that they're aware of. Uh, um, in the totals, I will check on that because I know that we had an issue with um, the 941 adjustment, or I'm sorry, the air adjustments not being accounted for in the 941 totals, but that was corrected um, on some releases ago. So let me double check on that, Sharon, um, and I will because I don't know if it truly affects. I'm thinking that it does not. It's just, you know, on the actual um, report itself. But let me double check this just so we know we're all on the same page. Okay. All right. I will look into that further and and definitely let you guys know. I'm not sure that it does because I would have thought we would have had questions about the 941 being inaccurate, those totals. And like I said, I know at one point the air adjustments were not being accounted for, but that was fixed. So I would think, um, I think it's just the individual like uh, employee, you know, detail as well as the totals at the bottom, but not the 941 total. Okay, I'll, I will definitely double check that. Okay, so now we've, we're moving on to the W-2 report. And here's then what that W-2 looks like after um, we've refunded that amount back to the employee. And then actually, you know, uh, created the, the Medicare pickup um, correction. So here's what the the W-2 looks like. And you can see here that um, we now have paid two pays at that. This is the correct applicable gross that Medicare applicable gross that we calculated earlier. So now we've had, you know, one pay, the original pay, and then the second pay. Um, and they both really should have had this same applicable gross um, if the Medicare pickup was paid correctly from the beginning. So if we add those two amounts together, you can see, oops, this is not what is showing here. So we, thus the error, um, the Medicare amount 
does not equal 1.45% of the Medicare gross. So when you run, you know, the W-2, you can select just for, you know, just to get heirs. Um, and I would highly encourage, you know, strongly encourage your districts to be doing that now. Um, you know, we're, we're into December. They might only have a pay or two left. Um, so run the W-2 report for heirs only and make sure that, you know, everything looks good. We can clean up anything before it's too late. Um, and again, one of the extra air adjustments that will have to be made um, in these types of situations are um, we have to do something with this taxable gross. So the system does all the other adjustments that we talked about earlier for them. They it just doesn't update the app, the um, you know, on the W-2 report, it's called taxable gross. In our system, we refer to it as the applicable gross. So those two terms are interchangeable. So this figure will not be accurate. So you can see here that, you know, this amount is actually off by the $96.18. And wouldn't you know, the $96.18 is exactly what we did the air adjustment for. So we have to add then one extra adjustment for the applicable gross. So we're gonna go to core adjustment using the type applicable gross and we're gonna add $96.18, okay? So that's just one extra step that needs to be done that the system is not going to handle. Once we do that, you can see here that that um, taxable or applicable gross got changed. The error is gone and it matches then what we calculated it should be. Okay. All right, that is a lot um, in a short amount of time. Um, I didn't want to throw too much at you guys because it's it's a lot. Like I I totally understand. I kind of wanted to give an overview of you know exactly how it's being calculated, how you know it should look on all the various reports, um, what how to correct. You know, probably the most common. Um, situation is if it didn't, you know, happen, the pickup didn't happen when it should have, um, and how to correct that. Does anybody have any questions at all? Um, hopefully I didn't go too quickly through it and didn't confuse everybody totally in the beginning there when I was going through those air adjustments. Okay. I will also follow up um, and at, and get the 941 um, question answered. Um, and hopefully this, you know, PowerPoint, again, you can take this back um, and use it, reference, you know, back to it, use the screenshots to, to be helpful to, you know, yourself or even your districts. Um, if they have situations that they need to work through, um, they can kind of step through the the screenshots as well as like the actual steps. I was thinking too, kind of after the fact, um, we could we could easily put something in our documentation to kind of step through um, the um, steps that we talked about up here, um, so that we can kind of put together a checklist maybe of um, Medicare pickup and have something. Um, to reference to in our documentation that, that might be helpful too. So look for that soon. We'll get that um, added. So it'll be another resource for, your, for you and your districts to have to, to, to look at. All right, I'm gonna look at the chat one, one more time. Okay, all right, well, good. I'm glad everybody found it helpful. I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. Um, and we'll see everybody um, next week. And I think we're wrapping up our, our Fridays with Fiscals here. 
Um, next week, um, I believe it might be Amanda is talking about the um, proration utility in USAS. So hopefully everybody can join us next Friday. Um, we'll talk to everybody soon. Have a great weekend.